yes, welcome to DC Economics. So we are going to look on future equation and we are going to be more concerned on inflation and in interest rate. So official equation, this is a concept in economics that describes the relationship between nominal and daily interest rate under the effect of inflation. So this equation actually was proposed by American economist Riven Fisher. So under official equation, what you need to understand is that a Fisher equation is given by taking the nominal, the real interest rate I minus inflation, whereby R represents the real interest rate, and whereby the pi represents out the inflation rate. So real interest rate actual, this is an interest rate that is not adjusted with inflation. It's not adjusted with inflation. It is to say that it can be affected with any changes in price level in the economy. I represent out the nominal interest rate. This is the interest rate that is adjusted with inflation. It's like to say that the interest rate cannot be affected with any changes in the price level in the economy. We can present also the Fisher equation as this given equation that bracket i, 1 plus i, that represent the nominal interest rate is equal to 1 plus r, that r represents the real interest rate, then times again bracket 1 plus inflation rate bracket. So pi represent out the inflation rate, R represent out the real interest rate, and the I represent out the nominal interest rate. So we may apply this kind of equation even in solving different problems concerning about Fisher equation. Now for that case, now let's look up, let's try to describe on the the relationship now for the future equation. So, as an increase in inflation rate normally causes an equal increase in interest rate, in nominal interest rate. So, this is one to one relation, is what we call the Fisher effect. Let's look at an example. Suppose Becker owns an investment portfolio last year, and the portfolio earned a return of 3.25 percentage. However, last year's inflation rate was around two percentage so becker wants to determine the real rate of return he earns from his portfolio so how could we solve this kind of scenario here now we apply the fish equation now solution so fish equation is given by taking bracket one plus i that represent of the nominal interest rate bracket is equal to one plus R represent of the real interest rate times again one plus inflation rate. Now remember, suppose Baker owns an investment portfolio last year, the portfolio earned a return of 3.25 percentage. It's like to say that we have the interest rate, we have the portfolio end of return of 3.25, that represents out the I, which is a nominal interest rate. So the nominal interest rate, this is an interest rate that is not actually adjusted with inflation. So we observe portfolio and a return of 3.2 percentage. In the last year, in the last year, there was an effect of inflation rate. So what we need to consider here, nominal interest rate will be equals to 3.25 and the inflation rate for the last year, it is 2 percentage. Now from the formula. From the Fisher equation, we have 1 plus i, that i present out the nominal interest rate, is equal to 1 plus r, r represent out the real interest rate, times 1 plus inflation rate. So when we, we require to find out what we are finding here, remember, we are finding the rate of return, that is a real, uh, that we call the real interest rate, the interest rate that is not adjusted with inflation, that is the, the interest rate that is actually adjusted with inflation. So from our equation, we take out 1 plus i, 1 plus pi is equal to 1 plus r, 1 plus pi over 1 plus pi. So we, we, we make out 1 plus r the subject since we find the real interest rate. So we divide by 1 plus pi, both sides. So we obtain 1 plus r is equal to 1 plus i divided by 1 plus pi. So we shift, negative, we shift positive 1 to the left hand side to be subtracted. 
so we obtain r is equal to 1 plus nominal interest rate bracket divided by 1 plus inflation rate bracket minus 1. So the real interest rate we take it will be equal to we take out 1 plus the nominal interest rate that we had to our data set that was uh, 3.25 then bracket then percent then divide by 1 plus we had the inflation rate that is 2 percent so the real interest rate will be equal to 1.26 percentage so the required rate of return the real interest rate will be equal to 1.25 for mr baker So this will be the answer. Let's try to look at the example. Yes, from this another example, let's try to uh, look on how we can apply the quantity questions with uh, more connectivity to feature questions on how we can solve uh, different problems. Let's take an example. Suppose V is constant and the money is growing at 5% per year and the output is growing 2% per year and the real interest rate is equal to 4. Now, we are required to solve, we are required to solve the nominal interest rate R and part B, if the Fed increases the money growth rate by 2%, the percentage point per year find the change of nominal interest rate and part c suppose the gross rate of output falls to one percentage per year what will happen to inflation to inflation rate and what must the fed do if it wishes to keep the inflation rate constant from this kind of scenario a uh, solution is that the part a remember we are required to calculate the nominal interest rate that is given as i and suppose we have the velocity that is constant that change of velocity is equal to constant but also we have the money growing at five percentage the money growth rate and we have also the output growth rate that is two percentage but also we are provided with the r interest nominal real interest rate that is four now from the formula Nominal interest rate is given by taking real interest rate plus inflation rate. So nominal interest rate is given by taking real interest rate plus inflation rate. So we take out we take out the function uh, that is real interest rate plus inflation rate, whereby the real interest rate we have is four. But remember, how could we find the inflation rate? The inflation rate is given by taking the change of money supply or the change of money growth minus the changing of output growth. So the change of money growth we have is 5%, but also the changing of output growth is 2%. So we take out the money growth, the change of output money growth that is 5, we minus the change of output level that we have provided the data set that is 2%. So this means that the inflation rate will be equal to 5 minus 2, which is equal to 3. So let's take the inflation rate and plug, in, and plug into the formula that will give out the nominal interest rate is equal to 4 plus inflation rate that is equal to 3. So the answer here will be equal to 7. So nominal interest rate is equal to 7. Nominal interest rate is equal to 7. Now let's come to part B. So part B, we are required to uh, we are required we are, we are required to calculate the change of nominal interest rate if the Fed increases money growth rate at, by two percent. So from change of from inflation rate that is change of money growth over change of output growth, 
Remember, the money growth has changed by increasing to 2%. So this means that when the money growth increased by 2%, uh, so the change of nominal interest rate will increase with the same percentage. Remember, when money supply increases in the economy, inflation also increases. And when it decreases, also inflation will decrease. So any change of money growth by increasing on the same amount will lead to the same amount of increase of inflation rate. So change of I, nominal interest rate is equal to 2, will lead to the same increase in the money growth rate by 2 percentage. This means that, as I told you, the money, change of money growth has a positive relationship with the inflation rate. So, and the output growth has negative relationship with inflation rate. This means that when the output grows, when the output goes up, the inflation rate will decrease. And when the output goes, goes down, the inflation rate will increase. So vice versa is true. So the change of nominal interest rate that is, is in two amount will lead to the same increase in the money growth rate by two percentage. So let's try to check on part C. So at part C, at part C here we are, we suppose the gross rate of output falls to 1% per year. What will happen to the inflation rate? So when the output growth falls at this percentage and the Fed does nothing on affecting this kind of changes, this means that any changes to output level we need an increase of inflation on the same change of the output on the output growth level. So the change of output inflation rate uh, will actually be determined uh, more conven uh, conveniently to what is known as the change of output level. So any change of output level by decreasing any change of, any change of decreasing of the output level will lead to the increase of inflation rate to the same amount of changes. So this means that a change of output growth has a negative relationship with inflation rate. So when any other factor of input, output level increases, inflation normally decreases. So any change of inflation rate, so in order for the Fed now to prevent out, the inflation rate should not change. In order for the Fed to prevent inflation from rising or from any changes, the Fed or the central bank must reduce the money growth rate. Since when the reduction of money growth rate went down, the inflation rate will decline. So any changes, any decision that may be made by the central bank to make the inflation constant, it must be uh, only to reduce the money growth rate by one percentage point per year. So this will help actually to cap down inflation and to make the inflation rate be stable, to not change anymore. Thank you. This is DC Economics. Don't forget to subscribe and watch on other videos. Bye-bye.